Mercedes' much improved third generation i30 delivers smarter looks, a wide variety of body styles, efficient engines and stronger standards of safety and media connectivity. In short, if you were shopping in the family hatchback segment, it's a product that certainly adds up on paper. But then the i30 always has. Will this one have more lasting real-world appeal against apparently more charismatic rivals? In theory, all the engines that feature with this facelifted version of the third generation i30 are completely new, but that's only because they've had 48 volt mild hybrid tech added into them. As usual with this kind of technology, uh, the difference out on the road is difficult to feel. Although Hyundai has provided a selectable energy flow screen in the instrument cluster there, so you can see how the system's working. As before, the lineup is primarily based around two core power plants. There's the 120 PS three cylinder one litre TGDI petrol unit we're trying here, and an alternative 136 PS four cylinder 1.6 litre CRDI diesel. Hyundai has also now added a third option in as part of the update, a 159 PS 1.5 litre TGDI petrol unit, which is what you have to have if you choose to specify the uh, sporty N-line trim with this car. Talking of sportiness, the top i30N hot hatch continues with a potent 2 litre TGDI petrol power plant, and that's now uprated to 280 PS, and it's paired to a new DCT 8-speed automatic transmission. The mainstream lineup is our focus here though, and the six-speed manual gearbox available with all the core power plants has now been improved with the brand's latest IMT intelligent manual transmission. And this decouples the engine from the gearbox uh, after the driver releases the accelerator. And that allows the car to enter into two possible levels of coasting depending on the conditions. Uh, the first leaves the engine idling and the second turns it off altogether. Partly as a result of that, this one litre petrol model, the i30 variant that most will probably want, is able to return a very class competitive set of WLTP rated efficiency stats, up to 61.4 mpg on the combined cycle and up to 121 grams per kilometre of CO2. As before, the drive dynamics of this car aren't especially involving, but it does score in terms of refinement and the supple ride that's delivered by the multi-link rear suspension setup. That is the kind of thing that rivals lack or make you pay extra for, but it's standard here across the range. In an age where Hyundai is designing cars of this size with the dramatic pavement presence of their Ionic 5, the look of this i30 isn't going to turn any heads. This facelifted design of the Mark III design, though, has more visual appeal than anything else we've seen in this model line to date, uh, primarily with the adoption of this wider and far more overt 3D front grille, below which sit uh, black-themed corner cutouts incorporating beady front fog lights. Uh, redesigned slimmer headlamps with multifaceted reflector MFR LED technology complete the front end changes. Not much is different elsewhere, although these redesigned diamond cut 16 inch or as in this case 17 inch alloy wheels that are fitted to the mainstream models aim to give this profile perspective more of a premium feel. At the rear, this facelifted model has adopted a fresh bumper design in pursuit of sleek aerodynamics, a change which sees the previously high set reflectors positioned a bit further down. Enough with that, let's take a seat at the wheel. Where the look is familiar, but the finishing touches are not, or at least they won't be if you've stretched beyond entry level spec, because then you'll get yourself the more digitalized cabin feel that we have here. But that comes courtesy of a much bigger 10.25 inch center dash infotainment monitor that's complete with Hyundai's latest Blue Link telematics and this seven inch driver's supervision instrument cluster, which sounds quite grand, but actually isn't because uh, unlike the competitor digital instrument monitors, its screen doesn't extend the width of the instrument binnacle. In addition, the air vents and the steering wheel, uh, they've been redesigned too. Uh, you can now specify a pewter gray interior garnish finish if you don't like this usual black. And there's wireless phone mirroring too, so there's no more need for unsightly cables. As before, there's 
plenty of cabin stowage space and although the seats don't look especially inviting, getting comfortable is actually easy. That's thanks to plenty of seat and wheel adjustment and standard electrically adjustable lumbar support. Time to move into the back seat. As with most other cars in this segment, it isn't possible to sit three fully sized adults back here with any real degree of comfort. But if there are only two of you, uh, then you'll find that uh, there is reasonable space for legs and knees and shoulders. Finally, let's take a look in this Hyundai's boot. Uh, the tailgate is simple to open thanks to a proper handle here in the panel. That's something that rivals now don't bother with. It isn't particularly light to lift up and there's quite a high lip to lump your stuff over when the hatch is open, but the aperture is quite wide and the 395 litre capacity is class competitive. If you need more space and you want to push the rear backrest down, there's up to 1301 litres of carrying capacity available. Some family hatchbacks have standout qualities, say in efficiency, handling or sheer style. The i30 isn't one of those, but the combination of virtues that it does offer continues to make this car difficult to ignore in its segment. We've little doubt that one day the brand will provide it. Indeed, the i30N hot hatch and the fastback body style prove the company's willingness to take that step. In the meantime though, it's ultimately hard to do too much better for the money, which means that for the time being at least, the eyes still have it.